for show and tell. I'm showing this dude, which is me. And if you don't tell, which you should, I am a sheep. So, from Jeff Tech, I see question Troy got me sick. Let me go check. Back. It took two hours to do the research, but yes, I am. Because I couldn't, I was searching, is, is me a sheep? And I had to find one of his episodes. So, yeah, that took two hours. I just cut it with some editing and stuff. NBC proudly presents its special holiday coverage of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The Macy's 58th Annual Thanksgiving Day Parade is coming to you live from New York City. Your hosts for this great event are Brian Gumbel, Stephanie Kramer, Pat Sajak, and special guest host Florence Henderson, together with an exciting lineup of stars that include Rich Little, Tony winner Hinton Battle, and the Broadway cast of The Tap Dance Kid, and terrific bands, plus hundreds of crowds, beautiful floats, and the most spectacular giant balloons in the world. All that and much, much more, including a special visit from Santa Claus. Welcome to Jeff Check I See Quester and Story Time. Today I think the show will be about Thanksgiving. Cause it's Thanksgiving today. Woohoo! You know, a couple of days ago I think I met a turkey. Let me um go check this spot. Bye bye. If you'll remember, at the end of the last episode, um, I had some trouble with ghosts. And to make a long story short, my house was destroyed. Completely destroyed. It got kind of like sucked up into a vortex. Um, so I've been spending the last two weeks rebuilding my house. And I think I've rebuilt it to exactly the way it was. It was a lot of work. I had some help with my puppet friends, but we did it. Um, we got a great episode today. We're gonna read. We're gonna do drawing, different different than I usually do. Uh, we of course have excellent video from Wonderland Spectacle Company. Uh, what else? Got a video about friendship. And I think we should just start the show. Let's do this. Well, here comes what you might call the men's liberation movement. And that's a lot of movement, isn't it? <laughs> this fine feathered friend is not Mother Goose, my friends. It's Father Gander. And the little lady he's taken for a ride is actually Mother Goose. But a lot of us have drawn turkeys using our hand. You know what I mean? You like... Put your hand down on a piece of paper, trace it, and then add features to make your hand look like a turkey. We've all done that before, I think. I know I have. Today I thought it'd be fun to see what we can draw with our handprint that is not a turkey. So let's give it a shot. So I'm going to make my handprint using these ink pads. Um, if you're doing this at home, you can, if you have ink pads, you can do it with those or water based paint, whatever you're using, make sure you check with your parents first. Um, and I would advise having a roll of paper towels nearby in case it gets messy. I'm going to press my hand onto this here ink pad. This is like a brownish color. 
Yuck. All right, there we go. Then, we'll simply press down like so. That's pretty good. Okay, now if we were making a turkey, we would do it this way, right? But, I was thinking, what happens if we turn it different ways? Aha, I see something here. I think that I can make this into a horse. Start with the horse's tail. Horses are pretty hard to draw. Not sure what makes them so tricky. And in fact, this is looking maybe more like a cow, but you know what? I'm gonna stick with a horse. There we go. And then the horse's head looks like it's right here. It's like leaning down to eat some hay. <laughs> this is an oddly proportioned horse, let's put it that way. Give it its mane. And then it's eating grass down here. And feel free to add as many colors as you want. Like you can color this grass green or whatever you want. There we go. It's not so bad. <laughs> There's a horse. All right, let's do another one. This may be the most amusing amusement park you'll ever see, at least on wheels. It's an ingenious replica of Canada's famous new park called Wonderland. Wonderland Spectacle Complex Turkeys! Hey, come look, there's turkeys in our backyard! Today, so I'm running it and I'm scouting for turkeys. Ouch! A brief history of New England turkeys. English colonists found wild turkeys that were plentiful in Massachusetts when they arrived in the 1600s. That was because Wampanoag, Massachusetts, and other indigenous people had cared for the lands and creatures so all would thrive. But turkeys disappeared as English settlers overhunted them and cut down too many trees for farms, firewood, and building. Mount Tom in Holyoke during the winter of 1850-51, to 51, the last recorded wild turkey in Massachusetts was shot by a hunter. Sixty years later in the 1910s, the state began trying to bring back wild turkeys, but they didn't have success for half a century. The problem was farm-raised turkeys. Hatched in captivity, the birds didn't know how to elude fox, people, and other predators. In 1972, state wildlife officials tried a new approach. Let's visit the Mass Wildlife Headquarters in Westboro to learn more. I'm Jim Cardoza. I'm a retired wildlife biologist for Mass Wildlife, and I was in charge of the wild turkey restoration program in Massachusetts from 1969 to 2009. Turkeys were very rare in the United States in the early 20th century. They were not common at all. They had almost disappeared. They had disappeared in all the states north of Pennsylvania, and people were just trying to manage the population by cutting hunting seasons and doing things like that. What was little known then is that much of what a turkey needs to know to survive in the wild is learned behavior. It's not inherited. Some things are. They know how to feed. But in order to survive and evade predators and all that, they learn that from the hen turkey, their mother. That was a key point, that we, if we were going to restore turkeys, we had to use wild trap birds from a northerly state. But then we have to get somebody to, 
that's willing to help us out in the state of New York was. That first year, myself and another person went out to Western New York and we worked with others that were from their state who knew where a good place to bait was and that type of thing. And they helped us catch the seven birds. It was winter. Trapping, it was generally more practical in the winter because they're hungry. You put out bait and get them to come to the bait site. We use uh, scratch feed, cracked corn, wheat, and oats. And the turkeys find it. And after they're used to it for a while, you go back early, early in the morning, depending on when. Sometimes you can tell it's morning or afternoon by just checking it. And you hide either in a blind some distance away, or if you're doing it in a farmyard, you can sit in a vehicle. And when they come and start feeding on this pile of bait, and you fire it, it makes a heck of a bang. And it propels the net over the top of the turkeys and tangles them up. And then you, all, you and your assistants run over and get them out and put them in box. When we released them in Beartown, mm -hmm. it was snowy and we couldn't get anywhere past the building that was the headquarters, even with a four-wheel drive. But there was a dead-end road that went down to a few houses that butted up against the forest. And at the end of that, there was a big field. So we drove down to the end of the road where the last house was, which was plowed, and took the boxes up and let them go there. When they flew out of the box, they just flew off into the woods. Turkeys were released into the woods in western Massachusetts, then how did they find their way into my city backyard? For the first few years, we knew they were there, but they didn't appear to be doing much. Then in the next two years, they were spreading out into the surrounding towns, and by the late 1970s, yeah, they were well over most of Berkshire County and a couple of the adjoining areas. So we knew it was going to work. We just didn't know at that time how well it was going to work. We moved them from the Berkshires to places throughout western, central, and southeastern Mass. As time went on, we just kept putting them where we thought they would work, and, and most they did. But we didn't know that because the, the habitat requirements weren't really known because during this period when they mostly disappeared due to habitat loss and very lengthy hunting seasons, they were only up in the very remote mountains, big huge blocks of hardwood and so on. We thought that's the habitat. But over time, with the studies being done elsewhere, it was found they can tolerate a lot more different situations than you think they can. Then something happened that surprised the scientists. Turkeys moved into towns and suburbs and even cities because it turned out that turkeys found trees and fields and feed that they liked in those communities too. Fred, Fred, the Somerville turkey just flew in from Albuquerque feeling fresh and oh so perky gobbling round Town. Walking down Porter Street, flapping those wings, tapping those feet, looking much too cute to eat, whistling a happy tune, eating some fluff to stay real strong, a top Spring Hill bread sings a song, the neighborhood dogs like to bark along with their new turkey friend. Fred, Fred, the Somerville turkey just flew in from Albuquerque, feeling and oh so perky, gobbling round our town. All Fred's cousins live in Brookline. Fred's in Somerville having a great time. Going to Honk Fest, playing in a drum line. Fred supports the arts. Fred, Fred, the Somerville turkey just flew in from Albuquerque. Feeling fresh and oh so perky, gobbling round our town. Going to a movie at the Somerville Theater, putting a quarter in your expired meter, helping old ladies to cross the street, first in line to volunteer for Art Beat. Fred goes local to spend his cash. Fred does the mash. The monster mash. Fred, Fred, Somerville turkey.
they roost at night all the time, except when the hen has ones that are too little to fly. Other than that, they go up in trees at night to shelter themselves from predators. If the turkey family slept high up in a big oak in our neighborhood, super into this drawing things that are not turkeys with my hand. Let's draw some more. Whoa. All right, this might be kind of a mess. What should we do? Let's do another closed hand one, or let's do a closed hand one. Whoa. Cool. All right. See anything? Once again, the turkey, we would do that way. This way. This is the way I made the, the octopus. This way. What about? All right, we'll go back to this original way, but I'm not going to make a turkey. Let me know if you know what this is. Any ideas yet? Kind of just looks like a five-eyed monster, which would actually be an A-OK -okay thing to draw. But I'm gonna keep going. Give you a hint, these are feathers, but I am not drawing a turkey. So, there we go. So like I said, these are feathers. Now I'll draw the bird's face. Let's give it eyelashes to match the feathers. I don't think birds have eyelashes. But you know what? I'm not so sure about that. You know what it is yet? What if I fill in the shape like so? I can even give it a few more feathers. This is a peacock. Of course, needs some legs. There we go, a peacock. All right, moving on. I'm running out of paper here. But let's see what else we can think of. Alright. It's not really looking blue, it's kind of just looking black. Uh, let's do a spread open arm or hand now. Ooh, that's pretty good. Alright. Turkey would be this way. Mm, okay, I got another another idea. This is kind of the way we did the horse, but this color is kind of giving me an idea. What if this is a trunk? I'm guessing you already know what I'm drawing. Not too many animals have trunks. It's nice. Big floppy ears. Yeah, like so. So yes, you probably guessed that this is an elephant. It's an elephant with very long legs. Unusually long for an elephant, I'd say. There we go. And maybe I'll add a little more ink here and here. There's a whole book by Ed Emberley about drawings you can make just with fingerprints. 
Ooh, let's make it raining, in fact, since I'm doing this. It's an elephant standing in the rain. Um, but that Ed Emberley book is very cool. You should check it out. There. An elephant standing in the rain. Whoa. Would you like to look out the window some morning and find this critter in your backyard? Well, it's not likely to happen. Because this is Max, the muskox. Max lives way up north near the Arctic Circle. You want to know how I got there? I do. Okay. How did you get here? So since you didn't fly, at least not first class. You can see that Max is all set for cold weather around the North Pole with his thick, shaggy coat. In fact, the muskox holds the record of having the longest hair of all living creatures, with the exception of some rock singers and Patrick Duffy. Do you like your friends? I know I like my friends. Let's watch a video about friendship. Do yeah! make-believe yeah and it's loaded with familiar friends from our childhood there's the lion and the unicorn with a single horn he'd make a good pretzel holder little Bo Peep about to lose her sheep and that's bad and there are some good friends of ours George Cash and his band hey George all right This is a book called I Forgot Your Birthday by me. I Forgot Your Birthday. I'm very, very sorry. Tammy, I'm your best friend. How, oh, how could I have forgotten your birthday? Can you ever forgive me? Tommy, it's hush. I'll make it up to you. I promise. Wait here. Look, I got us party hats. Tommy, can I just... I know, I know. You can't have a proper birthday without decorations. So Tommy blows up a balloon, hangs up some decorations, hangs up a banner. You see, if you'll just let me... Oh yeah, I almost forgot. 
You got me a present? Of course, that's what best friends do. Oh, thanks. Try it on. Sigh. It's just your style. Can you just let me tell you that? I know, I know. Best friends listen to each other. And I didn't listen to you when you told me your birthday, told me when your birthday was. Tommy, that's not it. Zip. There. Now you're surrounded by your friend and family. I was told there'd be cake. Of course, cake. Everyone hold tight. By the way, who's Tammy? I got your favorite, strawberry. I'm allergic to strawberry. Let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Aren't you going to blow out the candles? Blow. Hooray! Speech! Speech! Thanks, everyone. This is very, very nice of all of you, but it's not my birthday. Gasp, 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 faint. It's not? I've been trying to tell you, but you wouldn't let me finish my sentence. I'm sorry, Tammy. I'm supposed to be your best friend, but I don't even know when your birthday is. It's okay, Tommy. Even best friends make mistakes. Besides, look at the calendar. It's not my birthday, it's your birthday. It is? Happy birthday! I didn't think it was possible, but I threw myself a surprise birthday party. That was I Forgot Your Birthday by Jeff Chekai. Oh, hi, Jeff. Oh, hi, Powderhouse Pickle Jar. Hey, Jeff. What's going on? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. You can ask me a question. What is it? Why do some people call Thanksgiving the National Day of Mourning? Oh, National Day of Mourning? Mm hmm Well, here's what I learned about Thanksgiving when I was a kid. Um, in 1620, the Pilgrims came over on the Mayflower, landed on Plymouth Rock, and in 1621, they had a big feast that was three days long, and they invited the Native Americans, and they all came and ate food together. What does that have to do with mourning? Was the feast, like, breakfast time or something? Was it, like, brunch? No, not, not morning as in, like, 8 a.m., Morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. Like a deep feeling of sorrow or sadness. Mm -hmm. The story that I was told as a kid about Thanksgiving leaves out the most important part of what happened between the Europeans and the Native Americans. And that is that the Europeans killed millions of the Native Americans. They also brought with them disease that wiped out a lot of Native Americans. And the Europeans took their land, land that they had been living on for thousands of years. 
That's very sad. The National Day of Mourning was chosen in 1970 by a group of Native Americans to take place on the day of Thanksgiving to sort of counteract the story, that story, that happy story of the pilgrims and the Native Americans and to have a day to commemorate the struggles of Native peoples, the struggles of their ancestors and the struggles of the Native people still feel today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also a day of protest, a protest to fight against the injustices and racism that Native Americans still feel in this country thousands of years later. That's a very sad, sad story. So yeah, it is, it is a complicated story but it's the story of America. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Pumpkinhead. He's the lovable bear that's advance man for Santa Claus, and as you see, he's just leaving Toyland with a train load of presents heading for Eaton's department store. Some train, isn't it? The engine looks like the late model used on our Amtrak lines. And on each side, there are two big candy canes. So kids, that isn't a choo-choo, it's a lick-lick. I think I've got a few more ideas of things to draw that are not turkeys. Though my hands are getting pretty inky at this point. Let's do a few more. Ink me up. Ink pad. So it helps to turn the page different ways, hold your hand different shapes. So I'm gonna hold my hand. Let's do another spread out one. Kind of like so. Okay. Now, what do I see this time? Oh, I got an idea. Let's uh, bring this here. Like so. Can you see what I'm drawing? It's a dinosaur, specifically a Stegosaurus. Boom, 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 and boom. I think I'm gonna have to fill in all these shapes. There we go, Stegosaurus. Think we could come up with more? Bet we can. All right, maybe I'll try two more. I'm gonna do the paper this way. Stick with blue just for fun. Okay, ready? That's good. Let's do a closed hand, a tightly closed hand, and I'll really push. Ah. Ooh, okay. What could this be? Let me see. What if we turned it this way? Hmm. Or if we can turn it this way. Let's go back this way. All right, I got an idea. This one is going to be a bit of a stretch. Tell me if you see it. Start with the eyes. Let's give this person a big nose. So I've been drawing animals, but this is finally a person, a specific person. Let's give him a mustache. Can you guess who it's gonna be yet? I bet you'll guess once I add their hat. Once again, this one would work really well if you had red paint or red ink. Can you see? See who it is? It's Santa, y'all. <laughs> Let's give his hat a little blue just to complete the look. It's Santa Claus.
Now I'm going to try one last thing. I'm not sure if this one's even going to work, but I have an, another idea. I'm going to try to ink up my hand, which is really a mess right now, but um, kind of to press down a different shape. Let's ink up the back of my hand now. Ay, ay, ay. Do not do this at home without checking with your parents. Because look at my hand. All right, so I'm going to make a peace sign and push down like so. Let's see what we get. All right, it's that shape. Let's make this. into bunny rabbit. Drawing a turkey is fun. These are also fun to draw. Peacock, elephant in the rain, Santa Claus, dinosaur, So yeah, why don't you make some drawings and send pictures of them to me? I'd love to see them. In regards to that video of me attacking customers in a Dunkin Donuts parking lot. All I have to say is I was hungry. I wanted a donut. Why didn't they give me a donut? This ends the press conference. There we have it. Another episode of Jeff Chekai's Sequestered Storytime. Thanks again so much to the Wonderland Spectacle Company for their contributions. Please join us in a couple weeks. We'll have another thrilling episode of Jeff Chekai's Sequestered Storytime. Yeah, buddy! <laughs> Wait a minute. Who do we call on when there's a job to be done? Who's the captain of our team? Who is number one? Oh, and pretty strong and steady, bold as he can be. There ain't no man to get his friends from the hole. Oh, it's me. Oh, it's me. Oh, it's me. Got no hair, but you don't care. What happened to the cabbage patch? Red, red, some real turkey just flew in from Albuquerque. Feeling fresh and no oh so perky. Our new turkey friend. Ulysses, what are you I'm doing up there? I'm just making a video that's going to get a thousand views. Whistling and a happy too. Bye.